I'm Rudy Stein. Uh, my wife and kids uh, farm west of Barhead. We're currently in the middle of our lambing season here in the, the first part of June. So uh, we're busy looking after lambs and uh, trying to manage our grass at the same time. My name is Darlene Stein. We run a predominantly grass-based sheep operation. We lamb out about uh, 465 ewes, 70 of them in April as replacements, and the remainder on grass at the end of May, beginning of June. We have a grazing management plan on our farm. That's kind of my area. I work together with my family to come up with that plan. We like to look at what we did last year, how many days the ewes spent in each paddock. We have a layout um, of our fields, an aerial shot, and uh, it gives us the amount of acres. And I can look back and I can see how many days they spent in each field, how many days recovery we had. And based on that information, we make our plan for the following year. Hopefully we don't have to change it too many times. Some of our paddocks are uh, uh, alfalfa, crested wheatgrass, orchard grass. Our other paddocks are more uh, natural, natural pastures. Managing early season grazing can be somewhat tricky, especially for us, we lamb on grass. And um, sometimes where we would like the sheep to be uh, at the beginning of the season isn't where we end up putting them. This year, for example, we wanted to put them on an alfalfa orchard grass piece, but because of the rain, we ended up having to put them on some native pasture because uh, it was just too wet and too risky to put them in the alfalfa. And uh, the native pasture offered some shelter uh, with the rainy weather, and uh, that's what we chose to do. You have to be flexible and adapt to whatever Mother Nature throws you and uh, change your plan accordingly. Early season grazing with lambing, uh, we've opted to uh, use larger paddocks. Uh, gives, it gives the ewes a little more room to spread out, find that there's a lot less mixing problems, uh, lambs getting mixed up and mothered wrong. Normally in our open paddocks, uh, we have portable shelters that we use, but with the, with the trees we didn't feel we needed them this year. Uh, any rain showers, we use the, the plastic raincoats on the lambs. That works very well. The paddocks are also uh, bigger. They can stay in those fields longer. When we're ready to move, it's just a matter of opening a gate and we'll slowly let them filter out on their own. Uh, I think for our operation, lambing on grass uh, is, is so much easier for, for everybody. I think it, it, to have various sizes and how your paddocks are set up uh, for us, we, we're off a long alleyway uh, with uh, gates on both sides, makes moving ewes with young lambs so much easier. One person and a dog can, can move, you know, a thousand head of sheep. Big trick with, with uh, managing your forage is to have the flexibility uh, to monitor your grass in the spring as things progress and your grass is slowed down. Catch that advantage of, the, of our fast growth that we get in this country. The great thing about uh, pasture lambing and early season grazing is it doesn't take a lot of infrastructure. We, basically we need some fences, maybe some portable shelters. We found that you either need a lot of shelter and a lot of trees or none. Um, a few trees makes a lot of trouble at lambing. Uh, the, the ewes will tend to pile up under the trees and um, you'll get lambs mixed up. We do have some portable shelters we use for uh, ewes that maybe had triples or can't quite keep their twins together. And um, we don't have um, those shelters right in with the main group that's lambing. We actually have an electric fence that keeps the, the sheep from being able to pile up under the sheds because they will and uh, we found that that's just a lot of trouble. So they don't have access to sheds that they can pile up under. Then lambs don't get laid on and um, they don't get mixed up. During our, our lambing, with our triples uh, or, or quads, uh, we usually bring them in, we'll, we'll catch the ewe, bring the lambs in, we'll put them in, in uh, jugs for, for a day or two and then keep them in a uh, pen by the barn so we can monitor them. As they get a little older with the triples, we'll usually pull off the, the heaviest lamb and uh, wean it, and we'll turn the ewe back out with, with uh, her other two lambs. If the, the weather's good, we will uh, tag them and band them uh, after their bellies are full, after they've nursed and they've had time to bond with their mother. Uh, if the weather is poor, we're getting rain or drizzled like that, uh, 
we'll usually just uh, put a, a raincoat on them and uh, either mark, uh, if it's twins, they will mark both right ear or right front leg or something like that so that we know they're twins. We usually will just drive through in the morning, check them, make sure that everything is okay, give them the, and then go out late in the afternoon where we'll put a steel tag in their ear, uh, record the number on the Zion, and mark them with, with spray paint. So at a glance across the pasture, we know if somebody's been separated, we know if it's a twin or if it's a single, and with these, if they're with mom or they're lost. So uh, it just makes, makes managing big numbers in, in a big area so much, so much easier, and we're not having to disturb everybody when we're uh, lambing on grass, one of our most valuable tools is our Zion, and uh, it allows us to keep track of all our animal data. The ewe, her history, did she have any trouble in the past, which lambs belong to which ewes, and we couldn't keep track of and actually utilize the information without that particular piece of equipment. We typically don't put our RFID tags in uh, until the first time that we weigh our lambs. Once uh, we run them through the system and weigh them, we put our um, RFID tags in. Once they go into the barn and we start weighing them with Bluetooth, then we need the um, RFID to scan them so we don't have to enter in everything manually. We don't really have too much of a predator problem here. Uh, we run quite a lot of guard dogs. We have six uh, mature guard dogs. The only predator issues we've had have been ravens. The guard dogs will actually even uh, protect the lambs against ravens now, but it requires having a lot of dogs around. What works for us on a grass-based operation is um, strict culling. Every year we try and keep a, a lot of ewe lambs, not so much for growth, but so that we can replace the ewes that don't work on our operation. They just don't perform well on grass, maybe not the body capacity, maybe not the mothering. And we used to have a three stri strikes and you're out rule, now we have a one strike and you're out. If you can't do it the first year, uh, you don't get a second chance. The other thing that makes it work is we have that same policy with our dogs. We've had good luck with dogs. They have a job to do, and it's a really important job. Without them, we could not do what we do. Those are probably the two um, main management decisions or criteria, aside from looking after our grass, that make the operation work for our family. What I think really makes our operation work is um, flexibility, the willingness to change and do whatever we need to do. Either we need to just skip making hay and save our grass to gain some recovery days. We're striving to have good deep body dews. Uh, we've tried some different rams and realized that on pasture having deep body and good udders is important because right now we're culling really heavily because the udders aren't standing up or their body depth isn't big enough to uh, to take in the capacity of forage to grow good, good lambs. The other thing that, that makes our operation work, probably the most important thing, is our family. We all work together. Overall, it works because um, we all kind of like being here. Mm -hmm.